I'm Jen DiMasio, Aviation Week's Managing Editor for Defense and Space, and I'm here with Laura Seligman, our uh, Pentagon Editor. We're here outside the Air Force's CV-22 Osprey, which is here at Paris for the first time. So I wanted to ask you, Laura, uh, one of the big things about the V-22 at the show, it's uh, ripe for a number of upgrades. The platform has been around for a number of years. What are some of those upgrades that the uh, U.S. military is looking at? So um, Boeing has demonstrated a number of really cool upgrades for the V-22. Um, they have done demonstrations um, with uh, forward-firing 2.75-inch hydro rockets, um, also Raytheon's precision-guided AGM-176 Griffin B, um, and a number of other mysterious upgrades that they've said they're doing, but they won't talk about exact details. And um, during a recent press conference, we asked about um, whether that might include lasers. Yeah, right. And the Air Force has been actually looking at putting lasers on the C-130 gunship as well as maybe a fighter. So there is definitely opportunities to port that kind of thing over for the V-22. Another thing that they're looking at doing is um, it's possible they might equip it with a 50 caliber um, Gatling gun below the nose. A Gatling gun is what they use on the A-10, yeah. so that would make it a close air support platform? Potentially, yeah, potentially. I think that's something that they're thinking about doing. I mean, arming the V-22 with these kind of weapons is really the next step for the V-22, I think, because right now it's really being used more of a, as an assault platform, and this would give it some self-defense and offense capabilities. Um, now, um, the V-22 can be armed with several roll-on, roll-off capabilities. Um, they can put a rearward-firing ramp gun on it, as well as a belly-mounted, remotely-operated gun turret. Um, so you can kind of roll on, roll off these capabilities as you will. But mostly right now, the Marine Corps is using it as um, an assault platform to um, carry troops in. Um, but with these upgrades, obviously, the V-22 will be able to be configured as basically a gunship which is really, like I said, the next step in capability for the V-22. I wanted to talk with you about future opportunities for the V-22 because there are some, it seems, both internationally and domestically within the U.S. Let's hit internationally first. Obviously, we're here at the Paris Air Show, the showcase for um, weapons internationally. What um, potential additional sales are there and what, what are Bell and Boeing and, and the U.S. military looking for? Yeah, so, but the other thing that... Um, that Bell, Boeing, and the military actually, the Navy rolled out this plan last year at Farnborough, was a, a sort of sharing of logistics support for the V-22 um, as a, something that could appeal to further international customers, so NATO, specifically European countries. Um, it's a good idea. As far as I know, it hasn't picked up any traction. We'll see this year at the briefing whether they have any kind of traction for international orders. And what about domestically? The United States, I understand, is looking to buy some more of these and in a slightly different way than before. What, is, what are the Marines, what is, what's the U.S. military looking at doing? So right now, the U.S. is taking part in two, they have two multi-years right now. They're looking to secure the third multi-year and potentially extending it from a five-year deal to a seven-year deal. So they need new international orders for that to bring the price down, because this is a very expensive aircraft right now. Um, another thing that's happening is that the Navy is buying their CMV-22s. I think they're buying four 48 of them for the carrier on board delivery um, for the Navy to replace the C-2 Greyhound. That will be really cool because it'll allow them to, to um, vary between all the different ships instead of having to kind of go back and forth from the carrier. So that'll be a game changer for them. And then the Marine Corps is looking to increase the number of Ospreys it's buying from 360 to 380, I believe. And the Marine Corps loves this aircraft um, more than anybody else, I think, right now. Um, so they're buying hundreds of them. They're also, the Marine Corps is um, starting this initiative to make it into one common computer configuration. So right now, when the V-22 rolled out in 2007 at the height of Iraq and Afghanistan, um, I believe eventually there became 77 different configurations of the V-22, and there's only a couple hundred. So that's, that's a lot of differences. So right now, they're starting an initiative to try to get them all down to two or three configurations. Well, thanks, Laura, for talking about the V-22 today. Uh, again, it's Laura Seligman and Jen DiMasio for Aviation Week.